So please remember them in your prayers. Anyway, so I also wanted to point out, uh, I'm sure many of us have heard the news about um, one, of my, one of my favorite professors in law school, Peter Henning, just recently passed away. And also there's a young lawyer at Honigman named Joseph Scray, who I knew from the bankruptcy community just passed away two weeks ago. If we could maybe say a moment, have a moment of silence for those two and others who have passed away since we last uh, met, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Anyway, so we are here to uh, talk about business and more particularly the business of the law firm. And <clears throat> and I am sitting here, by the way, I'm reading from Mark's speech. As everyone knows, he loves to talk. He loves to write. He, he, he's very, very wordy. I am not, but I'm going to say this is not. My thing, but I, I'm going to be reading for most of what he wrote. So know that these are his words, not mine. And, but I will do the best I can to be, to convey what Mark wished to convey to you guys. Uh, but first of all, I just noticed to my left is our first panel, which is of course a bunch of empty chairs, which I thought was pretty appropriate for a meeting amongst lawyers. <clears throat> uh, All right, let's see if this goes a little better. So it is much with much gratitude and love that we welcome you tonight. As you know, <laughs> uh, okay. I'm just reading through Mark's jokes and I just, I'm trying to, I'm gonna skip a lot of his jokes because they're, they're his jokes and his sense of humor and I'm just not able to convey it as well as he would. So, The business of the law firm. That's the subject of today's symposium. And why the business of the law firm? In prior years, we focused the attention on the fiduciary dynamic, corporate oppression, uh, you know, punctilium and honor. Like I haven't heard that a thousand times. And you know, the workday world, the norms and morals of the marketplace. Well, someone came to, came to Mark and said, you should do something else. You're beating a dead horse. Okay, well, <laughs> Those of us in the office know that Mark is in Enneagram number four, which I am not. He took it to heart and gave the matter a good deal. Enneagram is someone who's creative and artistic. Enneagram number four. So he, Mark is definitely very creative, very artistic. It, comes, it shows through his work, through his writing, and also some of the, through this. This is absolutely, when you think of his, his creative capabilities, this is absolutely an expression of his creative self, putting this together, the panels and the ideas, the, the topics, that is absolutely 100% Mark and his creativity at its best. So when Mark decided to put these cre creativity work, he thought, what would this look like? Well, <clears throat> of course, Professor Doug Mall will be here because that's what, this is what Professor Doug Mall does. He talks about corporate oppression, fiduciary duties and whatnot. That is his thing. He, of course, is on the agenda tonight. I believe he's first. Um, he's going to be coming up for Texas, and he's going to discuss his views on a recent opinion, and which, you know, which may be a harbinger of things to come. And through, although his presentation does not at first glance fit tightly within the penumbra of our subject matter here tonight, the business of the law firm, really, it does because of fiduciary relationships, is a sin non qua, as Mark would always say, of a law firm. And the fiduciary dynamic is thus omnipresent. And of course, thank you all for braving Omnicron, and of course, the traffic, traveling up here, Mr. Mole. And of course, the weather, I'm sure it's much colder here than it is in Texas. Uh, you have definitely always contribute uh, much to the program, and we, of course, appreciate you for that. Now, admittedly, the scope of the program went from very narrow what is corporate oppression? How can be remedied? To very broad in general, the business of the law firm. Note that it's not how we run a law firm or best practices. It's a law firm as a business. 
And what does that, what exactly does that mean to law firm as a business? Well, you ever notice how Barbara might not get his hair cut regularly? A painter's house is chipping. Even the lawyer doesn't read his mortgage documents or insurance policies or father to sue on a debt owed because she's been, he or she's been working doing that all day long. More broadly and importantly, we do run our law firm. We do run our, our law firms like businesses. In other words, we do implement documentation, methods, processes, organizational structures, strategies that we recommend to our clients. Or do we just advise others? <laughs> when Mark was a second year law student at Wayne State, which I was a colleague of his, that's where we first met. And I've known him since that so we become fast, we became fast friends and known each other. And I sit across the hallway from him at his office. He joined a joint MBA program, MBA JD program. Why? <laughs> why not, right? Because why not? He had, he had all, all the time in the world. And he had a kid on the way. Seemed like the smart thing to do. Well, then it end, ended after two semesters because while money making was <laughs> sorry. He found out that his first son was on the way a little more quickly than anticipated. So he dropped out of the MBA program, buckled down and finished law school first. But when he learned of these two semesters was much more, they didn't know, and what law school absolutely does not teach. That is the business of the law firm. Sticking to the parenting analogy, it's not unlike raising children. Nobody warned you about it. Nobody stopped you from doing, making bad decisions, and nobody is going to help you except for me in a, in a pinch like this, of course. And being proactive and control as opposed to responsive and out of control is like rowing uphill. This is different because there are playbooks and methods. In fact, the author of those is right here tonight, Mike Morris. I'm not sure if he's here yet, but he's gonna be, he is the keynote speaker tonight. Mike is one of the most successful personal energy lawyers in the area and beyond probably throughout the United States. He built this from, from the ground up, and he almost lost it, and then he rebuilt it. He wrote his own book about how to build a law firm called Fireproof Law Firm. And you should listen to it, listen, to, listen very closely to him because he, he applies his model on personal view landscape that is a distinction without a difference. We should all know, we should all have a scoreboard, and he'll explain that to you. Mike, if you're here, thank you for coming. If you're not here yet, where the hell are you? <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. We don't need to own law firms to think of our practice as a business. At the most basic level, there is an expectation that we manage our dockets profitably. How do we do that? How do we originate business? How do we differentiate, or differentiate ourselves? How do we market ourselves? How do we manage our firms when and, and how do they grow? How do we hire, retain talent? And what can we do so that everyone just gets along and gets their work done? We have dozens of brilliant lawyers and even non-lawyers. Yes, you brave souls who are in law school about to enter our profession, talking to you. <clears throat> there are many of us in this room, many sharks, tigers, and bloodsuckers. So tip of the hat to all of us and to you non-lawyers for daring to venture this, <laughs> this low, the bottom of the barrel. We have dozens of brilliant lawyers here tonight, even the, yes, never mind. I just read that. <laughs> Anyway, I wish to, I could stand up here and name everyone who's going to be speaking and thank them, but I can't because I have no idea who most people are. But if Mark was here, he could. Um, these are a lot of people that Mark I know who are, are colleagues of his, they're people who have cases with who he invites along the way. Um, does anyone know I'm a bankruptcy lawyer? He does most of his work in, the, in business litigation, business uh, shareholder oppression, and whatnot. So it, our practices are diametrically opposed to each other in many ways. Um, Anyway, so I wish I could stand up here and thank everyone who deserves thanking, but there's just not enough time, which is always a good thing because, you know, I can, we can all keep going on and on if we, if we wanted to, because we're lawyers and that's what we do. One last thing, this program is being put on by the Small Business Forum, which of course is a subcommittee of the business law section. The committee was formed in 2006 with the stated purpose of putting on educational programs concerning small business, which I prefer to be more accurately call closed corporations, privately held businesses, or private equity. Mission accomplished. 
look around. Many of us are own law firms ourselves or our partners, members, shareholders, et cetera. Right now, the roles are in disarray and we're coming out of a pandemic, the global pandemic. We want to get them in order, get people up, people to sign up, create a group of like-minded people, professionally speaking, of course, who are focused on furthering the practice in this area by doing cool things, like coming together as a cohesive group and working on initiatives to both contribute to the bar and our professional practices, but also through pro bono initiatives. My co-chair of this section, Sharon Levine, is here tonight. Um, Mark wants to in invite you to come and join and be part of this committee. We're gonna do a lot of great stuff, but hey, we're always doing a lot of great stuff, right? We're lawyers, everything we do is great. So, <laughs> to take a scene from a terrible movie, The Paper Chase, which some sadistic law professor recommended to watch our first day of law school. Look to your right, look to your left. Both of those people will succeed because they are awesome. With a capital A, of course. Now, I'll wrap things up here. I do have a tendency to go on. Oh yeah, you'll see this in the quiet zone up front here. I just wanna tell you that the symposium is being recorded for cataloging and publication. Oh dear God, I, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, future generations. Um, in this, so whenever you want, you can just go to the State Bar website and be able to watch this again, you know, in case you need help going to sleep at night. And so it's my hope that you, only, you learn a few things here, but also that you meet a new, nice a few people, reconnect with some old acquaintances who might have, you may not seen before the pandemic, and of course, enjoy yourselves. Um, as the old saying goes, eat, drink, and be merry, or whatever they do say, tomorrow never knows. <laughs>